Hello everyone, and welcome to this lab on the Taylor series. This lab has three main goals. First, we want to learn how to use the series command to calculate the Taylor series of a function. Second, we want to look at a graph, specifically a nice manipulate, that will let you kind of visualize and explore some of the properties of the Taylor series. And lastly, we want to explore the question of when does the Taylor series converge. So we'll start off by using the series command for Taylor series. So the basic command is series, and it has two main pieces we have to input. One is the function whose Taylor series we want to find. In my example, I'm going to use the function e to the x. And then we have three little pieces in the second grouping. One, we need to know the variable. Next, we need to know where our Taylor series is centered. Our Taylor polynomial is centered. In this case, I'm going to choose uh, x equals 0. And lastly, the degree of the polynomial that we want to output. So I'll choose to output a 7th degree Taylor polynomial. I'm going to evaluate this cell. And sure enough, here's the 7th degree Taylor polynomial for e to the x centered at 0. Now one thing we notice, we have this additional term at the end here, this uh, capital O, x to the 8th, and this just indicates that the other terms in this Taylor series are all of order 8 or greater. Now to get rid of that, so I can actually do some calculations of the series, I'm simply going to use the command normal. And just enclose all the stuff I had before inside of that command. I'll reevaluate and sure enough that will take care of my my order term there. Now of course if I want to really use this as a function I could just hit enter here and take this output or copy and paste it somewhere else and define a new function. Or I can just define a new function right in front of this command. I'm going to call my function Taylor and I'm going to use the equal sign to define this command. And I'll evaluate that. And then I can use this function like I would use any other function to maybe um, find the value at x equals 2, and I'll get an output there. Or, in fact, another thing I can do is to plot this Taylor polynomial. So how about from x to negative 2 to 2? And actually, I can see that Taylor polynomial looks quite similarly to e to the x. So I've been able to calculate the Taylor polynomial and I'll be able to use the Taylor polynomial in this case. One thing I'm going to stress again is that you have to use equal here, not colon equal. If I use colon equal, and I evaluate this, and I try to use this to find maybe the Taylor polynomial evaluated at 2, I'll get an error message. And the reason for that is when I use the colon equal, and I try to use this command, it actually looks back at this expression, and everywhere in this expression it's going to put x equals 2. And so that's the problem when I try to input a 2 here, because that um, doesn't fit in the command of series. So that's why I must use the equal to define this function and not uh, colon equal. Alright, so that's just the basics of using the series command. Now let's look at our neat manipulate. So here I have some of the, the meat of the code. And so this is something you don't necessarily have to be able to use. It's just there to make the manipulate run correctly. So you're more than welcome to just select that and close that and hide that code if you'd like. The thing that you can manually adjust is the function that we want to investigate and the range of y values in the graph, which I've called the height here. So when I evaluate using that function and that height, and then I run my manipulate, this is what I get. And what it is is the function I'm looking at and also the Taylor polynomial of some degree centered at some spot right here. So here I've chosen to center my Taylor polynomial at zero and it's the zero degree Taylor polynomial. So I can simply hit the plus sign to adjust the degree of the Taylor polynomial I'd like to use. For instance, this is the third degree Taylor polynomial for sine. So x minus x cubed over three factorial. And so here there's the Taylor polynomial in blue and the actual sine function in red. And I could also change where I'm centered at. Right now I'm centered at 0, but I could change that to be centered at 1, and I'll get that other polynomial. So the purpose of this video is really to show you how to use this manipulate and to encourage you to explore some different features. So try to explore the properties you know about Taylor series. For instance, we expect that as we increase the degrees of the Taylor polynomial, our approximation should get better and better. And sure enough, I can see that in this case. Now one thing that's kind of specific about the fact that I used uh, the sine function is notice that if I had the 7th degree Taylor polynomial and the 8th there's no change. 
And the reason for that is because if we recognize the Taylor polynomials for a sine centered at zero, we're going to skip those even power terms. So we can see that in this example. Another thing we should see by looking at this um, manipulate is the fact that the Taylor series, Taylor polynomials, are local approximations. So right now, this is a very good approximation to the function for maybe ranges of, well, let's see, one and a half, negative one and a half, out to one and a half. And if I change where I'm centered at, now in this case, I'm centered at 2.5. And sure enough, this is a good approximation of the function for some window around x equals 2.5 but it's no longer very good at x equals zero. So it's a local approximation where I've ever decided to center this Taylor polynomial. So we can see all these things from Manipulate. So I really encourage you to look at other functions and to explore these properties. One function I'd like to specifically look at together here is the function log of one plus x. And to properly look at this, I'm going to change my y values from negative 8 to 8. So now we look at this function. And what's somewhat unique about this function is when I increase the degree of the Taylor polynomials I'm using to approximate this function, we can see that I have a pretty good approximation when I use the fourth degree Taylor polynomial. It's a pretty good approximation from maybe x equals, well, negative 1 out to about positive 1. But we notice that if I can increase the degree of the Taylor polynomial, it doesn't seem to be any better of approximation past x equals 1. And this is maybe different than what we expected before. We expect that if we increase the degree, we should get a better, a better approximation. But in this case, it's not true outside of some interval. And so why is that? Well, to maybe further explore that, we're going to focus on the actual series itself. The series is x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3, minus x to the fourth over 4, so on and so forth. So I'd like to kind of take that out and work with it individually. So first I have to recreate that, that series. So I'm going to look at the sum of, now I'm going to try to write the general form of that. It looks like I have x raised to some powers, and then I'm dividing that by the same value as the power. And it looks like to be an alternating series, so I'm going to have a, a negative 1 in here, if I raise it to a power, it should alternate between positive and negative. And then I'll take my n values from 1 to, well, let's just choose 8 to get a good view of the series I'm creating. And the nice thing about Mathematica is I can evaluate this and see if I've done it correctly or not. In this case, I see I haven't done it correctly. My signs are off by 1. The real series is x minus x squared over 2. I have minus x plus x squared over 2. So it just tells me that I, instead of raising this negative 1 to the n power, it should be n plus 1. Now I can make that correction and see that I have the series. So I have this series and I want to explore what's going on. In fact, I want to sum up the whole series, not just the first eight terms, but the whole series. And I want to do it for specific x values. So specifically, it seems like it's a good approximation when I used x equals 0.5. So let's see what happens when I sum that series. Well, when I do that, I get a value of 0 0.405465. And that does actually match, if I look at the log of 1 plus x, which now is uh, 1 plus 0 0.5, and I evaluate that, it does match. So this series did converge to the correct value. It converged to the function at x equals 0 0.5. But from my graph, there seemed to be some problem when I went past x equals 1. For instance, x equals 1.5. So when I sum that series, I get my error message. And now I kind of realize what's going on. If I'm outside this interval, this series that I created, this Taylor series, doesn't actually converge. So even though I can write down the Taylor series, just because all the derivatives of that function exist, I can just go ahead and write out the Taylor series, it doesn't necessarily mean the series converges to anything. So in this case, the series appears from my graph only to converge from maybe x equals negative 1 to 1. So I'd like to make that statement, and I can kind of see that from the graph, but I definitely can't prove it from the graph. One thing I can do is, now that I have this representation for the actual series, is I can use a series test on it. 
Specifically, I could use the ratio test. So to use the ratio test, maybe I recall, first let me just clear my x here, that I want to take the n plus 1 term over the nth term and look at the limit of that ratio as n goes to infinity. So I'm just going to define a quick function. This function is going to be equal to the general form of my term, which is going to be x to the n over n. So that's my function here. And I'll notice I'm not going to use the negative 1 raised to the n plus 1, because in that ratio test, I'm really taking the magnitude. In that case, the negative 1 is not going to matter. So I'm going to evaluate that thing. And then the ratio test is going to say, let's look at the limit of the n plus 1 term over the n term. Once again, this should be a refresher from a previous lab. I'm going to the limit of that as n goes to infinity. And I get a limiting value of x. So when n goes to infinity, I'm left with just this x. And recall the ratio test tells me that wherever this limiting value is less than 1 in magnitude, that's where the series converge. So that exactly tells me that when the magnitude of x is less than 1, the series converges. It also tells me when it's greater than 1, it's going to diverge. And that's what I'm seeing. For an x value such as 0.5, whose magnitude is less than 1, my series was converging, it converged to the function. But outside of that interval, it did not converge. So that's our word of warning. Even though I can represent the Taylor series here, I had to put some thought into does the series actually converge. So that's going to conclude this lab on Taylor series. Go ahead and open up this notebook later and go ahead and play with this, manipulate yourself, and see what you can investigate. Thank you.